Hello. I'm with Barry Trower, the renowned British physicist and microwave weapons expert, who has, in the course of a very long and very varied career, worked with the British Royal Navy and the British Secret Service and is the leading world expert on microwave radiation. Thank you, Barry, for this opportunity to tap into your very great knowledge and particularly to examine exactly what it is that's going on with 5G and to launch straight into that question I would like to ask you the following as I understand it with 5G we are faced by a quite extraordinary increase in intensity of electromagnetic microwave transmissions when compared with the already dangerous 2, 3 and 4G levels that make up the current Wi-Fi and cell phone electro-smog fields. Can you explain, in short, the main difference between, say, 3G, 4G and 5G? Uh, 5G has a higher frequency. You will need a transmitter every 150 meters, uh, which is virtually on every lamppost or every tree. 5G has been shown in very recent history to be particularly more dangerous, even in areas where it has been set up. Uh, in one report around the transmitter uh, they found uh, around a hundred birds had died and another transmitter they found cattle that had died. Um, <clears throat> it is a particularly dangerous frequency because of its uh, high resonance. What I'm saying is that <clears throat> mathematically it is so complex that nobody can actually predict the harm it's going to cause. Uh, even the people who have made it can't predict the, the harm it's going to cause. Mathematically, it is a nightmare. <clears throat> um, one thing that interests me is that the upper end of the 5G scale is actually so close to the new weapons frequency uh, there is a new weapon which its nickname is the growler it can be sent from airplanes or vehicles and the growler is used to destroy the neurological and physiological systems in the body very very quickly <clears throat> crowd control or if you have an enemy or um, so in, in one hand you have the uh, industry saying that well they won't say it's safe they will say we have not found any harm uh, but on the other hand it is being used as a weapon uh, and of course the, the, the two are incompatible you can't have something which you can show to pregnant women or children and allow them to use it and in another use it for crowd control and to say that uh, the powers are different is absolute rubbish because with all microwaves a long low dose can be equally even more dangerous than a short high dose. So 5G is a nightmare. Already we are getting instances of uh, <clears throat> I think 70 percent less production of fruit, 60 percent decrease in insects that pollinate uh, trees. It, it is suspected of already killing cattle and birds, as I've said. But the main 
The main problem, as I see it, uh, and this isn't 5G, it is with the other Gs as well, but 5G is going to be much worse because it, it's going to blend into, in with the Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi is a known, proven, and used weapons frequency. Um, <clears throat> shall I just carry on? Yes, okay. okay. Um, th this is quite a long question, but it's very important for Poland. Um, I'll leave the weapons out, out for a minute. Um, the, the problem, that, as I see it, for Poland and countries that have huge forests, it is known and documented that uh, especially with 5G added into Wi-Fi, <clears throat> but with Wi-Fi on its own, 5G is going to make this worse. It is known and documented that in three generations of humans, only one in eight children can expect to be born healthy. One in eight, if at all. It is published that with plants and animals, depending on the reproductive cycle, some species will be totally extinct within five generations. That's been published. <coughs> so what you have is the total destruction and loss of Poland without a shadow of a doubt. That is published and it is provable. And one of the other main problems which is going to carry on, <clears throat> people underestimate how clever and how useful trees are. Now trees communicate with each other via their roots within the soil. They join roots, they help feed each other with one tree cannot get enough sugars, they will help photosynthesize the others. <clears throat> they also uh, help control the microorganisms in the soil. Trees also take out a lot of carbon dioxide from the air. And trees do not like microwaves. <clears throat> and you will find the resistance of trees going down as soon as you microwave them. But the other thing is, and, and not a lot of people appreciate this, <coughs> if you have inland fish or fish in huge lakes or inland fish, around 70% of a fish is tree. Uh, people find that hard to believe because the trees shred their leaves, they go into the streams, they are acted on by microorganisms, they wash down into the water, the microorganisms feed other microorganisms, you start the food web, the fish feed off that, and in fact 70% of a fish is actually tree, from a tree, through the food web. <coughs> now, if you destroy the trees, you destroy the fish and the ground soil. But it gets even worse. When you have long, hot summers, <coughs> trees produce a chemical of molecules which go into the sky. These molecules blend with water vapor in the air which form larger molecules and they actually form very whispery small loose fitting clouds but a whole forest will do this all at once how the trees communicate isn't known but it is known and it is measured that on very hot days to protect themselves from overheating, trees will release these molecules and you will get whispery clouds above your forests <clears throat> and that provides shade which keeps the trees alive. 
the trees take out the carbon dioxide. Now, if you destroy the trees or you make the trees sick, you get extra carbon dioxide going into the water. <clears throat> the water has microorganisms on its own called cocolithopores. And cocolithopores produce a chemical called dimethyl sulfide. The dimethyl sulfide goes into the air and is the only substance on the planet known which can be used in cloud formation. So if you follow the cycle, if you make the trees sick, which you will do, then you kill your fish, you kill the cocolithopores, who are very low intolerant to uh, carbon dioxide in water because it makes it acid. They are already in the process of dying and changing the cloud structure. So just by affecting the trees that people think are just trees, <clears throat> you actually destroy the fish, you destroy the ocean microbiology, and you change the planet's weather. And there is one more piece of information on this. It has been found and published. <clears throat> and I did have it, have it explained to me by a professor sitting where you were a few months ago, but I couldn't understand what he was saying. Um, but bacterium and viruses seem to thrive on microwaves. So they become resistant to all the treatment to try and kill them. They seem to think, hello, we're in danger. We will multiply more quickly. And he did tell me the process, but, but it, it wasn't in, within my knowledge to understand it. But bacteria thrive. So this is why when you microwave plants uh, and trees, and you have huge forests in Poland, <coughs> Within the, the span of a few generations, you are going to lose your forests, your fish, your plants, your pollinating insects, and your uh, children. <coughs> uh, and it is proven, and I have the documents, uh, you can expect only one in eight children to be born healthy. And I'm sorry it's such a long answer, but 5G is going to exacerbate this, make it much, much worse, because the trigger for this was really Wi-Fi. When Wi-Fi came out, 1999, 375 huge companies used the Wi-Fi frequency, which is a known weapons frequency, that was really the trigger. 5G is going to make this worse. Well, so basically this is a war, a weapon of war, as you've pointed out. It cannot be compatible with a healthy lifestyle, so that's the first point. The second point about the trees, of course, is extremely alarming. I, I suddenly got the message from Einstein, Albert Einstein, who I believe said if we lose the bee population, the planet will be in very serious trouble. I immediately make a correlation there between what you're saying about the insect population. Um, <clears throat> I have twice presented, we, we, we have a festival here, we have a festival here, uh, the Glastonbury Festival. I have twice presented the environmental lecture to the Glastonbury Festival. One of them was on what I've already been talk to, talking about. The other was on bees. I've, the, my bee lecture is on the memory stick, which if you can download it, uh, my bee lecture is on there. And yes, uh, it is well documented, well understood that uh, you will lose the bees from microwaves. So this, this this has been carefully avoided, talking about microwaves in relation to bees. We've heard about pesticides, we've heard about many things, but they've always steered clear of suggesting that microwaves might play a part in this. One other 
anecdotal piece of information concerning trees is that we've heard very recently that in England where they are attempting to introduce the first experimental uh, use of 5G we're on lampposts in cities like Gateshead for instance and I understand in Bournemouth possibly other places they're actually clearing trees I think possibly in Sheffield actually they're actually clearing trees from towns because they might interrupt the signal uh, that is correct and they're also finding uh, that insects are leaving the area and in fact it's not just bees um, and for any scientists watching this, I'm talking about the cryptochrome pigment with the double electron absorption navigation system that insects, arthropods have, commonly known as creepy crawlies to most people, um, all flying insects and they are responsible for pollinating 80% of the world's food. And we are destroying them in droves. You know, the, the information so extreme, so profound, so absolutely vital that I hope the audience is going to listen to this film at least twice in order to be able to take in the level of significance that you're describing. Um, I understand that 5G operates on millimeter wave frequencies, very, very fast, short ones. You will describe that more accurately, I'm sure. Can 5G be used to specifically and even accurately target individuals, for instance, or cars or houses or even rooms within a house? In other words, that means could it be used as a psychotronic weapon for population control? Uh, yes, it could, um, but you wouldn't need to because it, it, it would do it anyway. Um, the problem is uh, all living matter, all living matter, every single cell in every single living thing on the planet produces its own little waves around it. and. All of the, every, it, it, it's difficult for people to understand, but every single cell in our body can communicate with every other cell in the body. The whole body is, is one big chatterbox of, of components talking to each other. And in an adult, it, you, you have around 10,500 biological structures which all talk to each other and you produce a, a wave or a field, I won't get too technical here, around your body. There are people uh, who claim to be able to see this field <coughs> and, and, and I believe they can. Yeah, and if anybody wants to see or, or demonstrate this field, it's very easy. Um, all living things have it. Just take two ordinary eggs. Take two ordinary eggs, put them on a shiny surface and put them end to end. If they stick, turn one around and you'll find that they will fly apart because the fields will either attract or repel each other like magnets and every living thing has this field. Microwaves will come in and disrupt this field that is one effect. The other effect, which is what I was involved in in the Cold War, were the pulse frequencies. Now, <clears throat> you have clocks in your body, um, generally regulated by the hypothalamus, but you, ha you have clocks that monitor different parts of your body uh, and regulate hormones and all sorts of other things. <coughs> you also have um, structures, tiny molecule structures, which vibrate. <coughs> now, when microwaves go in, the pulse frequencies, they can 
change these clocks and they can change the rate that the hormones or anything is, is moving in the body. They can also, the, the word is resonance, they can also cause resonance in other parts of the body. <clears throat> now you have circadian resonant frequencies and you have cyclotronic resonant frequencies and you can grow in and out of these. So when an organ, let's say like the heart, is growing, when it is a particular size, it will meet the microwaves or the pulse frequencies and it's like if you have a spinning top and then you just give it a little nudge and a little nudge or you're on a swing and then you just lift your legs and you keep the swing going and then you can make it go higher and higher. Microwaves can do this to the clocks and to the organs and unbalance them and make them malfunction. <clears throat> now, you can grow into this and you can grow out as the organ or the body or the cell changes size. And it is known to date that women have 13 different circadian resonant frequencies than men. So you could have a lady sitting in a room saying I'm getting funny hearing or I'm picking up voices or I'm getting an irregular heartbeat or something's going wrong and, and the man could be saying don't be stupid go and see a doctor whereas in fact she is picking up or it could be a child <clears throat> and the most susceptible um, the most susceptible human forms are is, or is the embryo <clears throat> within the first eight weeks of pregnancy. Uh, that is very susceptible. So when I was talking to spies in the Cold War uh, for the years I did it, the, 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 the spies that were using microwaves as weapons, I made a list of probably 30 or 40 frequencies that were known and used in the Cold War, mostly by the Soviets and the Americans, although we did as well, <clears throat> to cause cancer, uh, neurological illnesses, drive people to commit suicide, uh, breast cancer, that sort of thing. I had a list of 30 or 40 pulse frequencies which I collected from spies that would cause probably 50 or 60 neurological and physiological illnesses to the point of death. And several people have published this, the illnesses, I published the pulse frequencies. <clears throat> Today, I think the list stands at 750 pulse frequencies. 5G will make that much, much more. But it's not 750 where you get this or this. It is 750 factorial mathematically. That means you can have the effects of number one multiplied by the effects of number two, number three, right through 750. And some people who are electrosensitive and are having this affect them uh, instantly, uh, the symptoms are exactly the same as lead arsenide poisoning. You really just want to lay down and die. That is it. Uh, you, you really don't have the energy to move. Um, and it is possible to change neurological structures and make people suicidal. And this is done both deliberately and accidentally. 
you will find around some transmitters, depending on what pulse frequencies they use, and they keep them secret, depending on what pulse frequencies, you will find mass suicides around some transmitters, eight different types of cancers around others. Uh, you will find lots of varying symptoms, which are all known and predicted. Uh, but um, for the industry, for whatever reason, it is worth the, I think it now stands at it's 17, I was told 17 trillion dollars that it's now worth. Um, and it's worth losing up to 60% of the population for this amount of money. And it's as simple as that, really. And I have a document that actually says that people must be deceived to protect, and, and the wording is, people uh, must really be deceived, although they've used slightly different wording, uh, by, by saying you select uh, a safety level that cannot be challenged in court when people die. <clears throat> and the actual wording is to protect industrial output profit. So they, and like the whole list of illnesses, birth defects, stillbirths, miscarriages, they're all there. Um, and the reason for all of this, and it, it was classified top secret and still is, but I have the documents, uh, is protect industrial output. And all of this is to protect industry. You know, Yadviga Wapata, who's in the room with us today, and I were very involved in Poland in 2004 to 2006 in trying to prevent genetically modified organisms getting into the country. And we ran a campaign based on getting each uh, Polish <coughs> um, province to declare itself to be a GMO-free zone. We succeeded in this, and it led on to the chairman of each of those provincial boards to write to the prime minister and demand a ban of the import and planting of genetically modified organisms, and he actually did in 2006, which made Poland the first country in the world, I think, to ban GMO. But what I'm hearing from you is exactly the same message that we heard about GMO, which is that this is uh, potentially an incredibly valuable patented tool for, if you like, possessing other countries, <coughs> uh, challenging the existing status quo, dominating the marketplace uh, with a something which is an entirely unnatural form, after all. So as a further point to what you're actually saying already, would it be possible, for instance, to generate an artificial epidemic using 5G if you chose to do so? A uh, brilliant question. I have said, uh, when I'm talking to countries, I have said that, uh, and you, you've covered quite a few points there, sir. Um, first of all, uh, this isn't all over the world. I suspect from my travels that 58% of the, of the planet are taking avoidance action to prevent this happening. I do know that when I talk to royalty and leaders of governments, leaders of peoples, uh, in the last couple of years, uh, 17 countries have started to take very serious avoiding action. Forty-two percent of the planet, to my knowledge, isn't. And they are putting this, and this is one of the countries, this is being really forced out, <coughs> and it's going into nurseries, schools, houses. Um, it's, it's going everywhere, absolutely unrestricted. Uh, you can't complain about it. Uh, it, it's, it's just going up 42% of the planet. So you, you do have an imbalance. And, and I have said, to answer your question, 
when you look at the we know the uterus um, can absorb 20% more radiation plus than the rest of the body because of the moisture content. We know you can have 40% more damage in the uterus. We know that the uterus does not have the, they're called protein 53 and the nuclear core complex. The uterus does not have the immune system that adults have for defense against this. We know that within 15 days of the uterus, cells can be programmed to develop cancer. We know microwaves can produce cells to develop cancer, and I can run through the whole process. Um, we know that the uh, thymus gland, uh, within the first eight weeks of the uterus, can be destroyed and the thymus is needed to develop the child's immune system up to adolescence. So, <clears throat> and we know it's been published. Um, I, I saw the publication in, um, I saw the publication in uh, many, many years ago. <clears throat> that, I'm sorry, I'm being distracted. <laughs> can, can I just... Oh, sorry. <clears throat> sorry, I, I was being distracted. <clears throat> uh, I, I read a paper that ladies who were exposed to a dose that an ordinary school child can get today um, in a hospital using a diothermy machine uh, which, which used the microwave, uh, the Wi-Fi frequency and <clears throat> the machine malfunctioned and the hospital staff <clears throat> from there, 47.7% uh, of the staff had miscarriages in the first, I think it was seven weeks of pregnancy. 47.7% of the grown-ups had miscarriages in the first seven weeks of pregnancy. Now, knowing that children can absorb much more radiation than adults because of their size, they absorb more, they're nearer the wavelength, which is the resonant frequency, if you do the calculations, <clears throat> the 47% can become 67.7% of children having birth defects. And this, this is this is this was this is just from background, and this was published by the World Health Organization. First, recently the European Academy for Environmental Medicine came up with a 48%, whereas I said 47.7 from the World Health Organization, it's 48%, the European Academy for Environmental Medicine. Now, if you add at least 20% for children, uh, this is where you're getting your birth defect rate, where in three generations, just 50 to 60 years, only one in eight of your children at this point in time can be guaranteed to be born healthy. And it's not children, it is all mammals. Because we all have the same genetic code. We have the same four chemicals. Any tree can read your DNA sequence. It won't do it any good and it won't, it won't need to use it. But any tree, a blade of grass, can read your DNA sequence. We all have the same language. And all mammals will suffer this. So 
the 42%, 42% of the world where this is being forced out. And this is provable. It is documented. It was forecast way back in the 50s, 60s, 70s. It was planned, documented, forecast, especially your big conference, which is top secret still to this day, in Warsaw in 1973. They listed, I think it was 300 pages of all the, and brought it down to 98 or 88 categories. The whole paper is top secret and you're still not allowed to see it to this day. But in 1973, they predicted this, that your country would be destroyed from microwaves. It, it is known, the effect is known, it is happening, it is documented, and it is being forced out for whatever reason, and I'm not a politician, and this is, and your politicians do not know this, they do not have access to the documents I'm mentioning. Even prime ministers don't have access to the documents that, that exist. Um, well, as I said before, this information is shocking beyond belief. And considering you just highlighted how in 1973 in Warsaw, at a high-level conference of which the papers have never been published, you can verify the fact that it was predicted that population will, Poland, Poland itself, will be literally wiped out over a period of time if this uh, technology is taken further. Uh, do you have a message for the government, for the prime minister, even for the people of Poland in respect? In other words, they'll be interested, the people will be interested in how to stop it. The government may know nothing about it. Uh, the, the, the message is in, in two parts. Um, and I wish I were the one that were clever enough to think up what I'm going to tell you, uh, but I wasn't. Um, I, I was with the king. I was the guest of a king for two days, a very, very clever gentleman who had an international law degree. And we were discussing all of this, <clears throat> and he said that within 50 or 60 years he would lose the viability of his country through all of these processes he said he said barry he said in 50 or 60 years i will lose the viability of my country he also said that he gave me his personal telephone number and he said, if you are talking to other kings or prime ministers, you can give them my telephone number. I will tell them what is going on and what are the consequences if they go ahead with letting all the microwaves in. <clears throat> I will tell them king to king. If they dial this number, I pick up the phone. That, that is one thing. And I carry this phone number wherever I go, but I'm, I'm only allowed to give it to leaders of peoples. Um, the other thing is, <clears throat> when I go to a country, I say, put your very best opponents, the people who say I am wrong, I want you to line up your very best opponents, I don't care how many there are, get your best scientists, your best anybody, put them in front of me and tell me why I am wrong. That is my message. If you think I'm wrong, get me to your country, line up all your experts and let them tell me why I am wrong and let me show you the documents I have and prove why I am right. And not only do I have to prove I'm right, I can point to your schools, your nurseries, your population and say, there is the proof. It's as simple as that. <clears throat> but 
the message is very simple. 58% roughly of the planet are taking avoiding action. 42 are not. You have a choice to be in one of those populations. <clears throat> if you want me to come to your country, I will come to your country. I work free of charge. I do not accept gifts. I have nothing to gain. In fact, I have everything to lose because I really don't like traveling. Um, so I will come to your country, I will give you the proof, and you can then decide, and you can put any opponent up against me you like, uh, but I can prove that what I say is correct. I have the government secret documents, and I will put them on your table. You, you've mentioned on a number of times already that this information is published this information is published. I think the audience will be very interested to know uh, how one can access that information uh, apart from the fact that your information you're willing to put out so to speak freely to the public. What about all these other papers that have stated this right from the early point in the 1950s? Are they all top secret? Yes, they're all top secret. When I say they're published, they are published within the governments that I have visited and spoken to. Um, and I, I have this rule that uh, I will answer any scientific question. You can ask me, and you can say, would you provide us with this proof? That's not a problem. But what I will not say is which government or which king or what country I have been to and I will not discuss what questions I was asked. So if anybody asks me what did we discuss today, I will say that is confidential. I will talk about your country and answer your questions. So the papers have been published within the areas I have been but they probably keep them to themselves uh, for security reasons or they don't want the country that published the paper to come in and have a diplomatic argument. So <clears throat> what I give the countries and what they do with them, but they are published within where I go. Now, at least some people believe that uh, 5G was developed in Israel not that that's necessarily of critical importance, but that the Israeli government will not roll it out in Israel. Uh, rather, Israel will develop a fiber optic version controlled entirely by the government and Israeli firms with no foreign competition allowed in. Firstly, do you understand or believe this is correct? And secondly, will the fiber optic approach mean the population will be protected from the dangers associated with 5G? Um, yes. Uh, <clears throat> I, I really don't know whether Israel are, are uh, rolling out 5G. I do know because it is published um, in the international papers uh, in open court that Israel are taking strenuous measures to protect nurseries, nursing homes, schools, libraries, kindergartens, children, uh, that they are taking strenuous measures to protect their population. <clears throat> um, I also know, because uh, I, I supplied evidence for this, uh, and I'm not the only one, I'm not the cleverest person on the planet here, um, I do know that the Californian Fire Brigade, I think it's Law 649, they have been exempt exposure to 5G, the Californian Fire Brigade, because a survey was done with all emergency service personnel, and, and I wrote two safety reports for emergency service personnel uh, condemning the exposure 
of microwaves because they use them a lot, like, like the military. <coughs> they found that after a 20-year study that every single firefighter in, within the study in California, every single one had a form of neurological damage or physiological damage, and it was published. <coughs> and when 5G came out, uh, they were exempt the added stress of 5G um, so that it, it wouldn't harm them anymore. But, but, <coughs> yeah. yeah, but it, it, it's known, um, it, it's known that emergency service personnel, and I've, as I say, I've written two safety reports, they're on that um, uh, memory stick I'm giving you. Uh, <coughs> the military uh, just have to use it and suffer. They're not told. It, it actually says in this paper, when I said um, protect industrial output, and it also said to prevent, I think, the military knowing about it as well but the, the military are very big huge they are kept in the dark <clears throat> which is why you get a lot of um, psychological damage from the military because they are extensive users um, but I, I do know 5g is the fire brigades have been exempted and there are other countries that are strenuously fighting against 5g now <clears throat> yeah, the, the fiber optic, none of this destruction is really necessary because all you need to do is run fiber optic cable uh, from source to the, the person that wants to use it. You can still have all your smartphones, all your cell phones, you can have everything you want, Wi Fi and everything. You just send it through fiber optic cable, but <clears throat> uh, the two reasons I can only think of why they won't do that: one, it probably cuts into the seventeen trillion dollar profit margin, um, or you dis you deliberately want a country uh, to be destroyed for whatever political or international reason. But, <clears throat> but you, you do not need microwaves in the air. You can have fiber optic cable from user to source. And you can have microwaves in the air safely because you can use a safe non-pulsed frequency. And if you can still have cell phones, for what they were originally designed for, which is if you have a tractor that tips over and lands on top of somebody, you can ring the emergency services. If you break down in your car on a country lane um, and it is freezing, you can ring the emergency services. If you use cell phones for life and death emergencies, it is a brilliant invention, invention. It will do its job. There will be next to no risk to any plant life. You don't need all of the microwaves. You would need a trillionth of the microwaves in the air now, not even that. Um, it, it would be as safe as crossing a road, you know. Um, there wouldn't be any. So you can have everything you want and you can have it safely. Now, the reason why it isn't, you have to ask the people who make the decisions. When one is traveling these days, and one doesn't have to be even traveling, one could be walking around in a city or anywhere, you find people nervously operating the cell phone or smartphones or whatever they happen to have, tablets, etc. Uh, as though if they ever lost this piece of equipment, they'd been in a state of total panic. How do you see this? In other words, what I'm suggesting is it's already become a form of 
an epidemic, a quite literal form of epidemic, that total and utter reliance on this piece of equipment? A uh, very good question. There are two answers here. The first is it has been measured on public transport that you can be as much as 3,000 times above any safety limit. 3,000 times. Now, if you think about the driver or a conductor or a pregnant lady or a child, uh, and some of these journeys can be quite long, <coughs> Uh, that is not a good thing. Um, sorry, what's the second part of the question? Yeah, um, it is known, and uh, yeah, it has been known since the Cold War because I was involved in it. <coughs> Although, as time goes on, more and more intricate knowledge actually comes out. We are now, we knew what would happen. Uh, we didn't know why. <clears throat> but now um, I, I'm reading papers on the brain and giving interviews, and now we know why. And this will surprise you that the phenomenon that I'm actually talking about uh, was actually first published and written about in 64 BC. That, that, it's not new. In 64 BC, a Greek living in Egypt by the name of Ptolemy, uh, spelled with a P, <coughs> he, a very famous scientist, and his work is still used today. Um, he found that when you, when you would heat up metals or variants, various substances, the radiation that came off the same as the radiation from the sun. If you made a, a solid wheel, like a cartwheel, only solid, and you drilled holes, <clears throat> and he put this in front of your eyes, when he spun the wheel at different speeds, he could induce you to be drunk, or sleepy, or angry, or behave silly. And it was known then that the photoelectric effect of the radiation going in the eyes to the brain would cause uh, different sensations. <clears throat> in fact, um, a, a gentleman scientist from, I think, Yale University that then went back to Spain, Jose Delgado, he worked on this and developed these pulses in the brain and he actually said that any moods or uh, moods or um, behavior traits could be induced. <clears throat> and he could make women become sexually romantic. You can, uh, one of the pulse frequencies will cause sexual aggression. It will cause you to commit suicide. Um, <clears throat> and you, you get even if you watch television, you will have a warning that says uh, if you suffer from photosensitive epilepsy, don't watch this because uh, th there is a feedback loop in the brain that will trigger one form of epilepsy from this. <clears throat> and you can induce chemicals in the brain, and I won't run through all the names of them, but you can induce chemicals in the brain by the pulse frequencies coming in. Uh, and I'll <coughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, yep. Uh, the, the chemicals which can be induced in the brain produce the same effects. They are not the same chemicals. They produce the same effect as morphine, marijuana, um, to make you hungry, and when I say hungry, I don't mean you need a sandwich. I mean you will rob a bank to get food. Um, sexual aggression, nightmares, hallucinations, suicidal tendencies. Uh, the phones can do this. 
Now, people you will see, they will become addicted to phones. You're getting this, the similar effect of morphine and marijuana, and this is now measured. You, you can see it on a scan in the brain. <clears throat> um, they'll pick up the phones and, and you get this pleasure sensation in your brain, like smoking. Uh, and they'll put their phone down and then unconsciously they will think, hang on, I need to make a phone call. Like I need a, I need a cigarette or I need, I need a drink. And you start using, and, and they are addictive. So one of the problems we now have is that <clears throat> the cell phone, smartphone has been hijacked by children. And they are very susceptible to this addiction. And psychiatrists have written that when you try and limit a child's cell phone use or take one off, um, one psychiatrist said that, that the child said to the parents and published this in Scientific American Mind, the child said to, to the parents and meant it a girl, teenage girl, if you so much as touch my cell phone, I will kill you both in your sleep. Um, another girl punched her mother in the face that tried to take the cell phone. Uh, and, and this is where children are. Um, they, will, they are really addicted. So it's like giving children cigarettes and alcohol and marijuana <clears throat> and saying, enjoy yourself for as many years to get you hooked. Now we're going to take them away. Uh, you won't do it. Um, and this is one of the problems. It's because adults and children are chemically, in terms of brain chemistry, they are addicted. And this was known in 64 BC. It is used by the weapons industry to cause people to commit suicide or get cancer or do whatever. Um, and it's, it is used to try and have brain control. So, um, and, and it's well known. Yeah. Absolutely extraordinarily important information, Barry. Um, I'm going to ask a follow-up question to that. Uh, 5G is said to operate at pulse frequencies used by US security for intense crowd control. Um, and that's going on a lot nowadays, as you've noticed, to try and keep people from ever making serious progress, any type of rebellion, you might say. Would you like to comment on that? Oh, yes, the um, it, it, 5G, it, it's, it's just above. The, the, the top frequency of 5G is, is around 78 gigahertz. The, what's known as the growler, that comes in at around 90 gigahertz, which electronically and brain speaking is really no difference. Um, the growler, I have known it to be tested on uh, special service, military special service people, and it, it sort of brought them to their knees in seconds. <clears throat> um, it is for crowd control. Uh, which will cause severe neurological and physiological damage, which could be permanent, that could induce cancer, could induce any brain abnormality. Um, and it is a weapon, and this is why I'm saying, well, if you've got a weapon here, giving a lower frequency doesn't mean that this is safe. It means it can be used as the same, only if it is a lower power. It will take longer. That's all. Um, you, you can't have it both ways. But yes, it is used. It, it's known as the growler. It is made for uh, firing or beaming from aircrafts. It can be used from vehicles. Um, and it is the latest for crowd control. Now, in the rollout planned for 5G, in the next two years, 1990, 1920, under, I believe, a title of something like Starlink, um, 
the gentleman called Egon Musk, who is one of the developers of the electric car, has brought a consortium of very big businesses together to launch an incredible number of satellites. Um, within two years, as I understand it, 20,000 satellites are supposed to be launched, which are going to cover the entire planet. As they say, every square inch of the Earth will be able to be under the, uh, under the effect, under the, the, the administration of these satellites, and they'll be able to absorb all the information that's going on anywhere, target any place on Earth. Aside from the fact of the pollution caused by trying to launch all these satellites, uh, the kerosene, etc., what is it about the satellite factor that plays into the 5G, what we're going to see on lampposts, these boxes which send the signal to and fro to people's smartphones, the internet of everything as it's now called. What role does the satellite play in connection with that? This is something I think quite technical but important for people to understand. Uh, there are many things. First of all, it isn't 20,000. It, it may be 20,000 satellites, but the actual number of transmitters going up is well over a quarter of a million. Um, it is high-level satellites, low-level satellites, drones, which will be solar-powered and just go round and round and round forever, and balloons, which will be solar-powered. Uh, the number, and I talk to military people around the world, the number is well over a quarter of a million. For countries which allow it above them, and it's not going to be all of the countries, <coughs> um, the people running the satellites will be able to, not that they will, but they will be able to control populations, they will be able to monitor every single piece of data that is being transfer transferred around the country and there will not be a single government or person's secret that can be kept secret they can target any organization any city any type of block they want to they can target uh, any sports activity, any government activity, you can control thinking processes um, <clears throat> and the information can be sold to people who want to buy it. There are lots of people who want to buy secrets. There are lots of advertising companies who want to buy things. Um, the information can be sold. <clears throat> so it could be used, whatever your imagination can think up, uh, there will be a way to use it and once it's in the air uh, you can't if 5G is on a lamppost you can climb up and turn it off if, if it's um, on a, a big tower uh, you can knock the tower down as some countries are actually doing um, you can take them down but if it's on a satellite um, how are you going to find out where it is? How are you going to track the drone or the balloon? How are you going to see it? And how are you going to cut out... It's like the sky television. How are you actually going to cover that much ground um, if you wanted to block the waves? You know, you, you couldn't. Once it's up and it's up, it stays up and then whoever is controlling it will have absolute full control over that country. Well, just to mention three names, the Boeing Corporation, Google, and Richard Branson's airline, Virgin Airlines, are just three of about 20 consortiums that are pumping vast amounts of money into this. Yeah, um, one thing is, <coughs> The, the people doing this may be innocent. Um, for instance, you can buy a cell phone and the company selling it to you um, <clears throat> may be legitimate. What they don't know 
is that up to 30 countries make the components for a cell phone and one of the countries could put in a trigger that says we will now listen to everything you're saying and nobody else will be able to pick it up. Another could, could put in um, other devices that will talk to other cell phones. So <clears throat> you could have a trigger in the device. Richard Branson could be told we're, we're doing this, it will help humanity, we're doing this. But the people making it will say, OK, but we're also going to put in this and this and this and this, and we can activate it from another satellite. You won't even know it's there. You won't even know it's activated. And people with cell phones now probably don't know that even if it is turned off, <coughs> it can be activated if it's got a camera they can listen to and watch and this was designed for business meetings for bankers to listen in which is why when bankers have meetings now all the cell phones are locked in a safe yes. um, but it was designed so when financiers and businessmen have a meeting they could not only see who was speaking the same as MPs in defense meetings but even if the cell phone is turned off, you can listen and you can pick up everybody else's phone call. And there are devices that will allow your cell phone to be used as a transmitter without you even knowing. So somebody can send a message, it will go into your battery, get a boost, go onto another one. Um, <clears throat> just the fact that your cell phone is off doesn't mean it's off. Uh, and and th these can be put in and they can be used. Uh, and th again, the criminal world, and, and, and I've met lots of organized crime, they can use, not only use it, but it has already started and been published that this is very, very good for blackmail very good for blackmail uh, and people are being told and we've had our our health service hacked where the hackers said we will publish everybody's medical reports on the internet and you're talking about people with AIDS or psychological you know unless you pay us a certain amount of money um, we've had our health service hacked and Recently, there was a, um, a website where people could send in their sexual preferences. They were blackmailed. <coughs> um, other websites, we've had a bank uh, hacked just this last week, where they've said, we will give everybody's bank details unless... So, you know, once you've got access to this, and the worst thing are these um, smart meters. Because once you get the smart meters, you have a mesh of information going all over the place from everybody. And if you hack into a smart meter, you've got everything. Um, you can even tell when anybody is going to the toilet in any house, and you can even listen to that. So it is used. It is used, it can be used for weapons, it can be used for blackmail, it can be used for crime, it can be used for def other countries' defence. And once this is up and up and running, you are really at the mercy of the people who have got the secret bits. But it's the people putting it up may be absolutely innocent um, and don't even know what they're doing. But once it's up, they've lost control. Um, I wonder if you can tell us at least some of the names of the countries which don't want 5G. I mean, this is an extremely interesting point because, after all, if the world is going to be, so to speak, divided between those that do and those that don't, the ones that don't already have extremely good evidence for why they don't and can be extremely influential on the ones which are in between, you might say. 
Right. I do know, um, you're into a sticky point here. I do know that I, the last 17, I, I don't know, when I go to a country, I often meet a leader of another country. Um, the last 17 leaders that I have spoken to, uh, I have had feedback because they say, how can we stop this or what can we do with this? The last 17 countries are actively now doing something and most of their work, you, you have to appreciate that not even kings can take on the industry. In fact, kings are usually shareholders. Um, uh, royal families, <clears throat> if somebody comes to your country and says this is harmless, they're radio waves, we will also get you a hundred billion dollars um, and, and they'll sign here. What the countries don't realize, uh, and th this is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant question, what the countries don't realize is when you sign here, you sign to say that if you decide to take the system out, you will f pay the company all the revenue it would get had the system been there. And you are really locked in this legal loop. They say, well, look, we have signed to say, yes, we can have it taken out, but we must carry on giving the company all of the money they would have earned had it been left in. But that's not necessarily the case. And I say no. We're back to secret documents. Because if you were lied to when it went in, now you have legal grounds for stopping it because it was lied, you were lied to. Because government documents actually predicted this and they actually say that uh, they will get this and sensitive people will suffer from this uh, and all sorts of things will happen. It's listed and documented, the Warsaw document, the United States Defense Intelligence documents, other documents. So if you were lied to, so the last 17 countries I've been to, or not countries, the leaders, they go to their legal people. Yes, they have been lied to, the same as Poland will have been lied to. It's the only way. If they come to you and say, we're going to destroy your country and only one in eight of your children is going to be born healthy, we're going to ruin your plants, you won't have any cattle left, and your your food production will be zero, um, <clears throat> you're not going to sign. So it, it, you are lied to. It's as simple as that. Now, they are looking at the legal way, and they are doing it in steps. They are saying, we are taking this out of here because you ha didn't tell us this, and they're doing, you can't just throw everything out. But what you can do with the industry is you can start with kindergartens, nurseries, because the safety levels only apply to adults. So there is your, and they, they wouldn't have told you that. So if the safety level only applies to adults, straight away you've got all your children, so you can take them out of schools, kindergartens, nurseries, hospitals. They also mention sick people, so you protect all sick people. Old people, you can protect old people. Then you, and what the industry don't do, they are supposed to survey the area for sensitive people and children. And it actually says special consideration must be made. So once you start doing that, now you can legally start getting it. <coughs> And then you can start leaning on the industry and saying, look, lose some of your $17 trillion and fix fiber optic cable, or we will go to the world court. And we will, 
and there is a list, and I have a list of 20 people, uh, and I know one that has already been named uh, for who should, a, a solicitor has already named a one person, um, a ringleader, to be taken to the world court for crimes against humanity. And the damage, and I have said this when I'm talking to countries, you will suffer more, no shadow of a doubt, you will suffer more than your plague in the 1340s and 50s and your plague in the 1600s. It, this will be worse than, worse than both plagues. But you can go to the world court and I have known there is a professor who I know because I've sent the information. A professor went to the world court with five other professors um, to stop this on the grounds of genocide. <coughs> it, it is genocide. Yep, it is absolute genocide. Um, and steps are being made to go to the world court and name individuals. Um, at the moment, it, with 42% it's being rolled out, but can I name the 17 countries? No, because it is a private conversation and they are in legal processes and if I name it, the industry will be monitoring every word of this and they will say, right, target this country, get your lawyers over there. Um, <clears throat> and they have really good lawyers. <clears throat> and they, I, I went to one court case and the first Land Rover was full of men with white wigs, or wore white wigs, and the second Land Rover was people who carried their papers for them. I mean, they, they turn up in force with, with their legal experts. So, <clears throat> yes, I do know the last 17 countries. Yes, they are taking action, and it can be taken, and you can win, but you need a team of very good lawyers, and you need the documents I have. Well, we're getting close, I think, to the end of this session. I, I did have a question which I, um, pr it might have personally answered already, but I would like to go back to it. And actually, based on a testimony you gave to United States District Court of Oregon some time back, and I'm, co I'm literally copied this down because I thought it was so interesting. Um, you yeah, I think it might. No, it's not. Can I'm going to read what you said. To my knowledge, this is in front of the, the district court in Oregon. You said, to my knowledge, microwave or radio wave sickness was first reported in August 1932 with the symptoms of severe tiredness, fatigue, fitful sleep, headaches, intolerability, and high susceptibility to infection in 1932. And now listen to this, everybody, because this is exactly what hundreds of people are reporting to us in Poland, in England, of exactly these symptoms. By 1971, the U.S. Medical Research Institute, the NMRI, <coughs> excuse me, referenced 2,300 research articles listing an excess of 120 impairments and illnesses attributed to the radio frequency and microwave radiation. So already back in 1971, you had enormous amount of evidence of the problem. So under the Freedom of Information Act, you say, extracts from the published U.S. Defense Intelligence Ag Agency documents confirmed NMRI research and stated, quote, if the more advanced nations of the West are strict in enforcement of stringent exposure standards, there could be unfavorable effects on industrial output and military functions. I, I'll, I'm going to read that again. If the more advanced nations of the West are strict in enforcement of stringent exposure standards, 
there could be unfavorable effects on industrial output and military functions. Um, absolutely correct. Um, and w after this, what happened was um, the scientific advisors, they needed a level of microwaves that could not be taken to court, that where you could not complain about being ill. <clears throat> and what they did, they went back to a gentleman scientist, I think his name was Swan, Sean Swan, something like that. And he, made, he set a level based in 1953 on a particular type of radiation and the outcome of this which is still in force today in Poland and 42 percent of the planet who are in fact dying from microwaves <coughs> they said and this is one rule and this is the only safety rule in 42 percent of the planet most of Europe Australia New Zealand Canada, or it, they've changed now, but most of Europe, Australia, Canada, <clears throat> what they said was, and this is the only safety rule, and it takes some believing, if you do not feel too warm in six minutes, it is deemed safe for everybody for a lifetime's exposure of any frequency, any power. So in other words, if you do not feel too warm in six minutes, it is deemed safe. Now think about that. You've got a, a schoolroom full of Wi-Fi, and if the children do not say, this Wi-Fi is making me feel too warm, in six minutes it is safe for them to use from a nursery right the way through up university to the day they finish and sit in front of it. But the, the clever bit is that microwaves, which is how microwave ovens work of course, microwaves cook from the inside out. Your brains do not have heat sensors inside. They're on the outside. <clears throat> Your body, the heat sensors are on the outside. Microwaves go inside. So what they have said is, if you do not feel too warm in six minutes with the sensors you do not have, it is deemed safe for life. In other words, what they have done is said we have set a safety level that you will never ever challenge in court and when you sign to say I'll have this in my country that is the safety level you are agreeing to and they knew before that that was not safe and it doesn't apply to children and animals and things uh, and this is your loophole but this is the safety level uh, and that is it. You said further, in order to protect industrial profit and military function and to avoid litigation from military employees, it was suggested that governments in the West choose a safety level compatible to the military industrial output. The governments that adopted the thermal level denied and still to this day deny any adverse effect from subthermal levels. Uh, I just added to that. So this has been a weapon of mass destruction from the start. Uh, could you possibly explain the difference between thermal and subthermal? Um, also how this relates to smartphones and other cell phone technologies, but you've covered the second part, I think. Yeah, you, you have um, ionizing and non-ionizing, really. Um, ionizing, uh, gamma rays, x-rays, that end of the spectrum, 
non-ionizing uh, you're looking at your straightforward microwaves um, non-thermal is when you do not uh, heat up uh, I, I need to get it, it's I think it's heating up one kilogram of body mass within six minutes by one degree it, it, it's, it's based on that yeah <coughs> yeah um, when people put a mobile phone to their ears they talk about feeling warm now yeah. No, we're talking about whole body radiation, but in fact, different areas of the body have different thermal levels. Um, when you put the phone to your ear and your ear feels warm, um, in fact, to, to show how dangerous this, this thermal or below thermal level is, all of the cell phones, all of the transmitters, the military, everybody, it is all given the below thermal level. So none of it should cause a, a kilogram of your body mass to heat up in six minutes by one degree, basically. It is all below thermal. Everything you use is below thermal. <clears throat> what they have not told you is that when you put the cell phone to your ear, and in fact, if you look at the safety guide that comes with cell phones it says do not hold it next to the skin um, <clears throat> when you when you hold it uh, and you feel warm <clears throat> in fact um, they're wrong because it is it is known and has been known that when you warm your skin by 0 0.6 of one degree which is basically a half of one degree. When, when your cells heat up by 0 0.6 of one degree, what are known as the heat shock proteins come into access. In the, they, the cell realizes it is in danger and starts a mechanism like a scaffold around the cell to protect it. But it can also protect then cancer cells and so what you can do once you it's 0 0.6 is you can start protecting cancer cells from the rest of the body to destroy um, and you also disrupt the cellular process people don't realize that the heat shock proteins are actually chaperones within the cell and there are millions of little chemical reactions that take place and they have a quite a lot to play so you are the moment you start warming it you're you're doing damage anyway <clears throat> i think we would now like to spend maybe the last five or ten minutes considering a positive outcome how people can get together to rid the planet of this horror story, this genocide process, and how we can work together to ensure that th there are plenty of other problems on the planet. It's, I mean, this is a, such an extreme one that Jadwiga and I who worked on GMO at that time, we thought this was probably what the most significant problem for the food chain. But now we see that um, these emissions, in fact, are also deadly to the food chain itself, let alone the GMO side. And then there's also the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, the biosphere. And so all of this is under threat. So how can we put a stop to these developments which amount to acts of genocide and the, to the human population and ecocide against the biodiversity of nature? Uh, you, well, it's easier said than done, but you, you have to go up against now the most powerful industry that the planet has ever known in fact it is in fact it is the industry is so powerful it can buy governments and uh, 
there is, I mean, there is a way to control this. Uh, and to control this, you take as many microwaves out of the air as possible. Everything can go on fiber optic cable. You can have cafes and transport where you plug in to fiber optic. Uh, libraries can have fiber optic cables. Schools, houses can be fitted with fiber. So you, you take out all the microwaves from the air and you leave it, which is what it was originally intended for, as a life and death emergency. Then there is no problem. But what you've got now are children and people who are chemically hooked on cell phones and they are going to destroy the planet that they're living on. Uh, it is a total re-education system. Um, the other thing that some people, some countries are doing is they are setting up white zones. Uh, white zones are now parts of country where there are no microwaves allowed. This is why they want to put up satellites to come down and, um, and people can go and live in white zones uh, and you can grow your own food and do your own thing. So there are white zones. Um, it, we will reach a crunch point whereby like with smoking um, you can only lie to so many people for so long and when there have been too many funerals, particularly children, um, somebody is going to say, we've made all the money we're going to get out of this. You can't take us to court, but w we can't risk the planet anymore. Now we'll have a new system. And the new system they're working on is light. Instead of microwaves, they're using light. I first saw a demonstration of this in 1982. So th they're only going as long as they need to to make as much as they can. The fact that people are going to die is really irrelevant. Um, <clears throat> maybe in 10 years, 15 years, you will have all fiber optic cable. Uh, you will have light instead of microwaves or a different light frequency that is coming in now, they're perfecting it, um, and then the, the people in, those, in, in the future will say, well, how on earth did they get away with microwaves killing that many people for so long? Um, the same as we said, and, and I know the answer, why did smoking keep going for so long? when it was known in 1599 how it caused cancer, or why it was lead put in petrol and kept for 30 years a secret, diesel and all the other things. And it is industry, like you read out, it is industry saying, we are going to make as much from this. As many of you that die have to, that's par for the course. Um, it's unfortunate, but there you are. Uh, you can't take us to court because we are invincible. Um, and, and there you are. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and, and that's it. But th there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it can't go on because even the people making their trillions will want to live somewhere. <clears throat> and the time will come when they will stop it. They will get rid of the microwaves, use light, fiber optic cable we breed a new breed of children who are not chemically addicted i there is it is worth saying now <coughs> um that uh, one country uh, and i can't mention it one country has now opened up clinics to detoxify children from their cell phones and detoxify them and get them back to normal. So in the world, and it, it is a big country and, and it, the clinics are right across the country, um, <clears throat> they are now detoxifying children. 
uh, and it has started and I, I know other countries that are now restricting children saying you will not have a cell phone until you reach this age and then we will tell you how much you can use it so th there are countries doing something about this but in our part of the world the countries in Europe that have not listened where the industry the Wi-Fi and the 5G are running rampant across the country once it's in it will be in until the industry decides to take it out and however many of you die that's just unfortunate as far as the industry goes okay now I really think that this very much concludes the talk today I would only add that those of us who live and work with the spiritual dimension in ourselves, the human dimension, the spiritual dimension, must also be aware that the spiritual dimension connects up with light. So it doesn't connect up with microwaves. The spiritual dimension is, is to do with light emanations, to do with photons, to do with uh, completely different and natural forms of background energy, so to speak. Can I just finish with one spiritual thing, please? <clears throat> um, I, uh, during one legal case, just about two or three minutes, okay? Um, during a, a legal case, um, lunchtime, <clears throat> I, I went into a pub, have a cup of coffee and a sandwich or a Guinness or a sandwich, and the, the barrister came, the opposing barrister for the industry, sat down, and he said, you know you're going to lose. And I said, well, I, I tend to lose because I, I don't have the legal knowledge and the planning law. And in this country, you are not allowed to use health as a reason to take down a transmitter or stop a planning application. They have said you may not use health as a reason. <coughs> And he said, you're going, to, you're going to lose. And I said, OK, but I will still try. And I said, will you answer me one question? I said, I'm prepared when I go into the afterlife to, to face all of the spirits. And I'm prepared to say I lost, but I tried. I wasn't good enough. But you, on the other hand, you are doing this with all the knowledge that you have. And when you go into the afterlife and they're not impressed by your club, the size of your yacht, your mansion, your bank account, what one sentence will you say having caused this genocide? What one sentence can you give I can stand there as a loser, uh, and I tried. What one sentence will you say, please tell me, where there is no lying, because they can look right through you. When you face the judges, what one sentence will you say to justify genocide? And he thought about it, he didn't answer, he went away and he won. Um, but that is what I would say to your decision makers in Poland. One day, one day, you will face your judge for genocide. Well, Barry, that's not a very appropriate ending. I'm not going to attempt to add anything to that. And I just wanted to say on behalf of us all and to the thousands and I hope millions that watch this program, this has been an extraordinarily important two hours or so we've had. We've all learnt things which I think we're going to need a couple of days to absorb and to really feel the weight of. And then we're going to set about the work we need to do to save Poland, and not just Poland, Europe, the world, etc. And you will be largely responsible for the fact that we have that courage and that energy. Thank you very much indeed.